A devout Muslim forced into a marriage she didn't want. I was suddenly married to someone that I didn't really know. Find out how she escaped. Plus, a crisis pregnancy center for expectant fathers. We've had men walk in the door and say, I need help with my girlfriend. See how they're helping these dads to be and saving lives along the way. I'm here for you, we're gonna make this work. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's Ephraim Graham with this week's top five stories from Studio Five. At number five. Steph and Aisha spent the fourth changing diaper since their family just got bigger. It is baby number three for the Currys. Aisha Curry posting, God has been too good to us. The proud parents, who we just can't get enough of, posted precious photos of their son, Cannon W. Jack Curry, who was born on Monday a bit earlier than they had expected. The NBA star and celebrity chef welcomed baby Cannon to the world July 2nd. Oh, that show the world! At number four, two music makers popping the big question. Maybe we can be each other's company. Is Justin Bieber engaged? That's the rumor. TMZ, the first to report, the singer popped the question to model Haley Baldwin Saturday in the Bahamas. The Biebs and Baldwin are all abuzz on social media, with Haley's dad, Stephen Baldwin, tweeting, Always pray for God's will. He is moving in the hearts of JB and HB. Let's all pray for his will to be done. Love you too so much. Kirsten, oh. Katrina Corley, will you make me a man and be my wife? Hey. Come here, Bobby. That's Chance the Rapper proposing to his longtime girlfriend. It came during 4th of July celebrations with family. I made it through, made it through, made it through. At number three. Kind of hard for me to explain. Okay. Texas crooner Leon Bridges graces the cover of the latest edition of Relevant magazine. The dishwasher turned music star is talking about his sophomore album and his new sound. It would have made sense to make another album that was the same, um, similar to my, my first album. I would have done great off of that, but I, I wanted to set new goals and um, I wanted more than, than that. The self-described Christian who makes art's new project is called Good Thing. I've been loving with no meaning, running from a feeling now. At number two. 2018 NBA Draft, the Denver Nuggets select Michael Porter Jr. from the University of Missouri. Studio 5 congratulates rookie forward Michael Porter Jr. on his multi-year deal with the Denver Nuggets. Back surgery limited him to three games in his final college season. And recent headlines suggest his start on the NBA court could be delayed. But his faith is not wavering. Man, all I can say is it's a blessing. You know, I'm not entitled to this. Everything's a blessing. Um, and I'm so excited. Um, you know, my path was different, a little different than everybody else's, but I'm going to make sure that this pick is this organization's best pick they've ever made. At number one. Whitney is in American theaters right now. It's the first film produced with the cooperation and interviews from fresh shy members of the singer's family. Including the legendary singer's mother, Sissy Houston. Nobody could touch Whitney as far as singing. They said, Mom, she taught Whitney everything she knew about how to use that voice. You had three places to sing from. Heart, mind, guts. She learned them all. You can say anything you wanted to say to her, what would you say? I love you, Whitney. Everybody loved her. She was a little girl wishing upon a star. I was trying to find my way back home. Well, for all the latest in entertainment news, check out Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it online at cbn.com slash studio5. Well, coming up, a young Muslim woman tries to run away from an arranged marriage. We trusted these guys um, to help us to escape. 
and they took us and they said, oh, well, the taxi's gonna come a bit later. In the end, what happened was that they took us back home and literally threw us back into, you know, into the front of the house. See how she finally escaped when we come back. Raisha wanted to live a Western life. And to her, that meant doing things like playing tennis. But to her devout Muslim parents, that was unacceptable. So they came up with a solution for their westernized daughter. I read the Quran. I read the Bible. I remember reading these books cover to cover. And then one day I just thought, you know what? I need to know. I need to know if Jesus is real. Raisa was born in a religious Shia Muslim family in South London and grew up learning the Islamic faith. I remember um, my mum and dad would have a mullah come into our house and teach us how to read the Quran. I definitely believed in Allah, so I never questioned that, but I never really felt any connection with God. Raisa's family were quite conservative. They wanted her to follow the Islamic faith, but also keep her away from Western culture had a very strict upbringing in the Shia faith. Other than going to school, I didn't really know anyone other than family. In order to obey her parents, Raisa wanted to do everything they asked. However, there was something that she and her younger sister really enjoyed doing. We loved tennis and I wanted to enter competitions. And they wouldn't allow that because it was not respectable for a Muslim girl. Raisa's sport was becoming a threat to her parents, so they thought of doing something that Raisa had no idea of. They explained to us that we were getting too Western and they wanted us to experience their culture. Um, and then after that, we um, went to Pakistan and we were sat down one day and my parents said, we have decided that you're not going back to England, that you're going to stay in Pakistan and we're going to find you suitable husbands. I never ever thought something like that would happen to me and it actually made me feel completely alone. I felt like, oh my goodness. They stayed there for several months while Raisa's parents were hunting for their husbands. And then one night, when her parents were asleep. We can't just sit here and wait for our parents to, to marry us off. Raisa and her sister asked the security guards to help them run away, but they didn't know what was coming up next. Well, basically, we trusted these guys um, to help us to escape, and they took us and they said, oh, well, the taxi's gonna come a bit later. Um, so in the meantime, they were trying to get a bit friendly with us, and we were not having any of that. So in the end, what happened was that they took us back home and literally threw us back into, you know, into the front of the house. She had to pay for the mistake she had made. Her parents forced her to marry a man from India and flew back to England after the wedding, not knowing that they had made the biggest mistake of their lives. I was suddenly married to someone that I didn't really know. It just turned out that he didn't want to be married to me and he actually wanted to come to England and have, um, have a job. His plan was for me to go back to England and sort out all his paperwork. She flew back to England broken and hurt. There were many questions on her mind. Raisa even questioned her belief in Allah. She didn't do the paperwork for her husband or return to India. She joined the police force in London and moved out of her parents' house. Through my work, I was introduced to this lady called Anna, and she was working with vulnerable young Asian women, and we just connected. We had the same heart and the same vision to, you know, to really try and reach out to them. Anna was a believer, so she tried to share her faith with Raisa. She was a very selfless person, uh, and although I was, I was not a bad person myself, I could see that there was something missing in my life that she had. Raisa was trying to recover from what she'd gone through. She didn't have the courage to believe again in anyone. Just because I was so curious, I just said, look, why, 
what's so special about Jesus? I said, just tell me, why, why do you love Jesus so much? I just thought it's the most crazy thing. She told me who God was. That was so different to what I'd been taught. I was taught that Jesus was a prophet and he was like Muhammad. But hearing Anna's explanation of how actually Jesus was God in human form, coming and then giving his life and dying so that we could have a relationship with God, you know, and I thought, well, what if this is true? What if Jesus really is God and I'm believing in Muhammad and Allah and, you know, but what if this is not the truth? So for me then, from that point onwards, I, I was determined to find the truth about God. Who is God? Um, and I just knelt down and, and I just prayed to God and I said, Jesus, if you are real, if you are who you say you are, then I hear your voice, that you're knocking on the door. I open my heart and I want you to come in. Suddenly, the minute I said that, it just felt like I was flooded with love. It was an instant feeling of being washed and accepted and I knew then that this Jesus is real. Worry and fear and everything was just like washed away. This love that I just felt complete, I knew I had met God, I had met Jesus. The Bible is the final word. It is the word from God. You know, in the Quran it does say that Jesus is the word of God. Raisa gave her life to Jesus that day and never looked back. She is now married to a godly man named Richard, and they live in Hereford with their three beautiful children. Raisa runs a cookery class and testifies to the love of Jesus with others, especially women who have gone through similar situations in life. Her family never accepted her back after she became a Christian, but Raisa found a new family in Jesus, which is eternal. God is always with me. He'll never leave me or forsake me. And I also believe that he will bring my family together and bring my family to him as well. I do believe that. You can have the same experience that Raisha had. All you have to do is follow the same steps. Now, for her, she was quoting a, a, a verse, and it's from, it's from the Bible. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, that would be you, if anyone, Hear my voice and open the door. I'll come in. And then he adds to it, I will sup with them. That means that we'll have a meal together. You'll, you'll be able to partake of him. Now, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful promise. How do you access it? Same way Aisha did, said, Jesus, if you're there, if you're real, I open the door of my heart and I ask that you would come in. That's what she did. And she found out that, yes, indeed, Jesus is God. What the Bible says about him is true. But the greatest truth, he wants to come to you and be your Savior, your Messiah. And that's his name, Emmanuel, God with us. Now, for you, right now, don't change the channel. Right now, if you want to meet Jesus, let this be the moment that you do that. So bow your head with me. Don't turn away right now. Bow your head with me. Let's pray that same prayer, and you'll get the same result. Pray with me. Jesus, that's right. Say his name. Say it out loud. Jesus, I want to know you. I want to know that you are my savior. So I open the door of my heart. I ask that you would come in. I ask that you would forgive me of anything that I've done wrong and set me free. And Jesus, if you do this for me, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer. Come into my heart. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Father, for those who just prayed, fill them with your love. Fill them with your acceptance. Let them know that today their prayer has been heard and answered. Show them, Lord God, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to let somebody else know. The Bible says that when you believe in your heart and then confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. So well, here's, here's how you do it. You're going to call us. 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I prayed with that guy on TV. Now, when you call, we've got something absolutely free for you. It's called A New Day. And there's a CD teaching, What Do Christians Believe? What do I do now? How do I live the Christian life? It's all free, packets free, phone calls free. Do it now, 1-800-700-7000. Well, still to come, a woman's pregnancy center that also treats men. I've had guys tell me in that room things that they have never shared with anybody in their entire life. See how this center is helping fathers in the fight for life. That's up next. Well, there are nearly 3,000 crisis pregnancy centers across America, and most of them are focused on women and having an unplanned pregnancy. Well, one Florida center chooses a different approach. Located next to Florida State University, a women's pregnancy center in Tallahassee addresses the critical needs of unplanned pregnancies in its community. Started in 1985, its main mission is to rescue babies from abortion, offering free pregnancy testing, adoption referrals, and ultrasounds. 80% of our clients will carry their babies to term. Yet babies aren't the only ones saved here. A women's pregnancy center also has a ministry for men, which encourages fathers to stand in the gap and fight for life for their children and their families. We've had men walk in the door and say, I need help with my girlfriend. Or, I've got a situation, I've gotten a girl pregnant and I don't know how to help her. Or, <clears throat> my girlfriend just called me, she's driving back from Jacksonville, she tried to have an abortion, she couldn't get it, and I just found out she's pregnant and she wants me to get her an abortion in Tallahassee and I don't know what to do. In the Center's Just for Men program, trained male counselors work one-on-one -on -one with men, seeking answers about fatherhood and life. I've counseled them many times with the girl in the room with us, and it's a woman talking to a man, and I know the impact that it has, but then I'll connect him to the man and I'll see his body language change, I'll see his eyes start looking at the male counselor, he's engaged. We're just trying to bring um, to the man an understanding of the value of life and the sanctity of life. The center also offers an abortion recovery program. Counselor Harold Francis often shares his personal story to help others like him. My wife and I, when we first got married, we'd only been married about 10 months, uh, we did have an abortion. He received much needed healing after completing the course based on biblical principles. I think that I had asked many times for God's forgiveness for what I had done. It opened it up to me that, you know, there were, there were issues in my life that I hadn't forgiven myself for, which is directly related to the abortion. That enables him to counsel other men through their pain. I've had guys tell me in that room things that they have never shared with anybody in their entire life. I'm 69 and there's a, a young African American in there that's 19 years old and at the end of the session we're both crying and hugging each other. Dome often sees that healing extend to other family members. We've had fathers, oh my gosh, go from, we're talking 50-year-old men bringing their 16-year-old daughter here thinking that abortion was the best thing and then um, meeting with a male counselor and coming out of that room saying to his 16-year-old daughter, baby girl, we've got this. You don't have to do this. I'm here for you. We're going to make this work. Practical needs must also be addressed for the soon-to-be dads. A lot of them are in tough situations financially. They're in between jobs. They're looking for jobs. Um, they haven't been working and they realize I really need to step up my game and actually go out and get a job now. I give them assistance and I try to help them with their job search, I help them with their resumes. Several men have even come to Christ. We've had men not, not even come into the center, but the woman give us permission to call her boyfriend and 
the male counselor called the boyfriend and the, male, the boyfriend is kind of going, really, you're interested in me? Really, you think my opinion matters? Wow. And then he'll start a conversation and we've had counselors actually lead them to Jesus on the phone, not expecting it at all, not expecting this phone call to be that kind of moment. The kind of moment the staff here call nothing short of miraculous. Charlene Aaron, CBN News, Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, I've said for years that I want a culture, a society that we live in. I want one where, where mothers want to have their children. Uh, it may be time to change that to uh, where fathers want to have their children. Uh, we've, we've gotten into an age where maybe it's popular to be a baby daddy, uh, but it needs to be popular to be a father, to realize the life that is being given to you and how wonderful it is and how exciting it will be to raise them up to see their hope and their future come into being. What a wonderful ministry. I certainly applaud what they're doing. Well, when disaster strikes, CBN's Operation Blessing strikes back in places all over the world, like Oaxaca, Mexico. That's where two sisters lived and worked until an earthquake destroyed their home and their business. Take a look. After multiple earthquakes hit Oaxaca, Mexico, sisters Bernarda and Francisca wound up living together with their parents and struggling to make ends meet. I have my own business cooking tamales. So when I saw my kitchen equipment on the ground, I felt so bad. I thought, what am I going to do now? Francisca used to work in a store and made a kind of coconut candy, but the store got destroyed in the earthquake. Now the sisters work together. They share a tiny little fire over there. About half of their equipment is gone, but they're still staying positive, still staying happy. I feel now is the time to have even more faith in God. So I was happy to be there the day Operation Blessing gave them all the equipment they needed to jumpstart their business. We got all of the equipment set up. Then it was time for a midday break. The best part of the day is knowing that this family has a good, fresh start and a bright future ahead. I thank you all for the wonderful gifts you have given us today. We were desperate and you rescued us. Nobody ever noticed us or offered to help us before. I am very grateful for everything you have done for us. And if you're a member of the 700 Club, that thank you, that gratitude goes out to you because a portion of every gift you give to the 700 Club goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people around the world. And you're a part of all of it. You're a part of everything we're doing around the world when you join. Another portion of every gift goes into the work of CBN International to preach the gospel around the world using television, internet, all the various media forms that are available to us today. And you get to be a part of all of that. Now, if you're not a member, I invite you to join right now. How much is it? It's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. Some of you can join at a higher level. We have 700 Club Gold for you. That's $40 a month. Then we have 1,000 Club. That's $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level, Call and join and be a part of it. Be a part of a great community of people, tens of thousands of people that say, yes, let's make a difference in the world today. When earthquakes hit in, in Mexico, let's bring help and relief to people in need. Uh, when disasters strike, our motto is, let's strike back. When you call and join, I've got something for you. It's uh, my father's latest teaching, Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. It's yours when you join the 700 Club. I want you to have it, so call us now if you'd like it. 1-800-700-7000. Here's a verse for you from Romans chapter 15. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. For all of us here at 700 Club Interactive, God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow.